Amen. The Bible says that with joy, we will draw water out of the well of salvation.
many of us believe that Jesus cared for us? Hallelujah. Your compatriots cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Self in thee, for you are my shield, you are my covering, you are my stability, my foundation, you are my shield, you are my. Can we be seated? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ban, for preparing our hearts for this hour. Just like I said, because of my announcement, we have agreed to observe one Sunday as our quarter prayer Sunday. But if you observe we were supposed to have this Sunday last month, but because of uh, other challenges and reasons beyond our control, we couldn't observe this prayer Sunday. But I so much believe since we have still have two months to go, I believe we are still on track. So by the grace of God, we have our brother, our uncle, Elder Isaac Okwanachi will be leading us on this, uh, in this uh, prayer conference today. And I trust that God will bless us even as we leave this place this morning. 
every one of us will live satisfied. Every one of us will live with a testimony at the end of this service. So I welcome you, sir, even as we jam our hands together to the glory, to the glory of God, to the glory of God. Thank you. Don't forget, I will be praying for the new baby, no, uh, babies of May and also marriage anniversary at the end, just as usual at the end of the service. Thank you. Let us pray. Eternal King, we are grateful for every one of us who has come. We believe that because we have spoken to you concerning these moments, you will visit us. You will listen to us. You will hear us. You will answer us. You will help us. You will save us. You will heal us. You will take us into your kingdom. We will see you face to face one day. Thank you, Father. Speak to us now, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. When the Reverend introduced me, he said, Our brother and uncle. Reverend is behind the news. I am now a grandfather for your information. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Reverend forgot that one. But I have to say it so that people will look at me properly. Yes. Please turn with me in your Bibles to look the same look chapter 13 Luke 13 Let us read from verse 22 Are we together And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. What I have read, is it in your Bibles like that? Please help me. Verse 23. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter. Enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up, and has shut the door. And ye shall begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of, all ye workers of, verse 28, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When ye shall see Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east, 
and from the west, and from the north, and from the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, they are last which shall be first. And they are the first which shall be last. May the Lord bless the reading of this portion to our hearts in the name of Jesus. The Bible is very clear that very few people will enter heaven. Am I the person who said it? Look at verse 23 of the place we just read now again. Somebody asked Jesus. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, strive to enter in. Do your level best to enter in. Because a day is coming when people will knock on the door and say, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And I'll say unto them, I don't know you. I don't know where you are coming from. Let's stop there for now. I did not grow up in Equa Church. I was born into Kwa Ibu Church. That is the most popular church in the Gala land. But in my father's house, on the 15th of December, 1975, my uncle, at about 5 p.m., looked me straight in the eyes and he said to me, Isaac, are you sure that if you died you are going to heaven? I had been smoking India hemp for three hours. I was just coming home when my uncle met me as I was entering the compound and asked me, are you sure that if you died, you are going to heaven? And I said, heaven? Who is going to die at the age of 17? What have I done? That somebody should be talking to me about dying at the age of 17. But the Holy Spirit got a hold of that question and stole the peace of my mind. So that even India Hem respects the word of God. I lost my peace of mind. Because whatever I did that evening, the question will come back to me, Isaac, what if you died? Where will you spend eternity? I grew up in the church. They were always talking about good people going to heaven and bad people going to hell. But I never heard how bad people can become good people so they can go to heaven. Nobody said it. Hardly, never, in 17 years, nobody made an altar call. No, 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 no. Not like that. No challenge like that. That night, at 10 p.m., when I could no longer, I couldn't fall asleep, I got out of bed, knelt by the side of the bed, and I'm calling on Jesus to save me. Because I knew that if I died at that point in my life, I had no chance in a million of seeing God. Because whatever evil young people were doing in my village, I was number one now. Number one, no future ambition. No regard for God. Nothing like that. So, God saved me. Because when I woke up in the morning, I was walking on cloud nine. I knew something happened to me. 47 years have passed. And this journey between me and Jesus is getting sweeter by the day. I gained admission to go to high school. Muritala College of Arts, Science and Technology in Makodi, shortly after this experience. That was 1977. When we got to the school, 
well, we had a fellowship in the school, but every Sunday when we are free to go to church, everybody will enter the bus in Makadi. All of us are traveling for so between 15 and 20 kilometers from where our school was in the North Bank. How many of us know Makadi? Okay. For the rest of you, I forgive you your sins, that you don't know Makadi at all. It's a sinful thing. <laughs> <laughs> not to know Makadi, but it's okay, I, I let go. So we will go something like 20 kilometers from our school to the town just to attend a qua church. Because if you wanted to hear the truth of the gospel, you went to a qua church. There were all kinds of churches in Makadi. But the students who had been in the Lord before me who were our leaders in the fellowship, they said to us, do you want to hear the gospel? Let all of us go where? Equa Church. That is how I joined Equa Church in 1977. My own church was in Makodi. But because our leader, well, I, 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 I never belonged to a fellowship before, so we believed our leaders, so we, every Sunday we would go to Equa Church. I'm telling you now, why I joined Equa Church because I wanted to hear the truth of the gospel and truly every time we went to church we were challenged to live holy lives to live righteous lives to live lives of purity and to fear God in every choice we made 1977 1977 till now how many years how many years? I'll tell you. That is uh, 40, 45 years. I have been a member of Equa Church how many years? Before many of you here were born. <laughs> but there's no Equa in my village. I wanted to hear the truth because I wanted to go to heaven. That was the reason I joined Equa Church. And over time, God has helped me. God has secured me. I know now that if I should fall dead now, I know for sure I'm going to heaven. Not because of what I have done, but because of the person into whose hands I've committed my spirit and I've remained faithful to him 47 years. All the years I've followed Jesus, discipline entered my life. Order entered my life. Purpose entered my life. Direction entered my life. So that I'm very sure of myself as I'm standing here now. If the Lord should call me home now, if my eyes should close now, I know where I'm going because I know also where I'm coming from. I lived a very sinful life until I met Jesus. Now I can tell the difference very clearly. It is better to follow Jesus than to live as you like. Listen, you have the choice to live as you like. But the consequences of living as you like is not in your hands. Almighty God will determine what will happen to anyone who lives as he or she likes. Not many people are going to heaven. And I'm telling you the truth. I don't want to say the next one that is in my mouth. Not every Equa church member is going to heaven. Am I the person who said it? Turn with me in your Bibles quickly. And uh, media, please help us. Matthew. Matthew. Chapter 7. Verse 13. Quickly. Quickly, please. All right. All of us, let us read together. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And, and, and many there be which go in thereat. 
the wide gate. Anything goes. Live as you like. Drink what you like. Smoke what, what you like. Sleep with who you like. No restraint. Many. Next verse, please. Verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and 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 few, few. Jesus knows the meaning of many and he knows the meaning of the word few and few there be that find it. All of us will have a choice to make whether to go to heaven or not to go to heaven. It's not God who determines it. It's you who determines whether you will go to heaven or not. Please, turn to the same Matthew, chapter 22 and verse 14. Matthew 22 and verse 14. Please, again, let us read together. For many are, but who is the person speaking these words? Talk to me, please. I am the way. The same person said it. I am the truth. The same person said it. I am the life. Is the same person who said it. Nobody will see my father except through... If you want to enter heaven, you must come to me first. That is Jesus. For many are called, but... Every one of us sitting here this morning, you can be a part of that number that is called few. It's a choice that we had to make. Remember, the reason I joined Equa Church, I wanted to hear the truth. And up to today, I have not seen any reason, any reason to go back. Because the churches that I was tempted to join. What are they preaching? Prosperity. This is my year of arrival. I will make it. God will make me a billionaire. What will it profit a man to become a billionaire and then you miss heaven? What is the profit? Are you listening to me? Thank God that Equa Church has stood in the same place where I met it 45 years ago. Are you listening to me? Please, are you listening to me? Okay. First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 6. First Corinthians chapter 1. Verse what? No, 26. Sorry. Verse 26. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26. Please, once more, let us read together. It's not everything we're going to read together, but these are the foundational things I want to say to us. And it's from the Bible. For ye see, let's read together, please. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that, what? Not many wise. Not many wise men after the flesh. Not many, not many are called. Not many. Ultimately, the call goes out to everybody. Those who will say yes, sir, to God and mean it are very few. Very few. Very few. Let me tell you what happened in the Bible. That you, are very, we are, you are very familiar with it. See, the whole world came under judgment by God in the days of Noah. How many people were saved out of the whole world? How many people were saved? Eight. Only eight people. Everybody else, they perished. If you think that God is a God of numbers, think again. No. God is the God of the remnant. The few. Few. Not many. Not many. Not many. Only few people will enter heaven. And I'm not the person who said it. Only that you can be a part of the few people that will enter heaven. It's a choice that you have to make. Okay. Another example in the Bible. Numbers chapter 32 and verse 12. 
Please show it to me. Numbers 32 and verse 12. Let's see it. Numbers 32 and verse 12. You see what the Bible says? Okay, all right. Uh, uh, let's start from verse 11 for a clearer understanding of this verse 12. Surely, none of the men that came out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. Verse 12. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite. This man was not an Israelite. He was not an Israelite, but he believed God. All right. And Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord. See, the people that left Egypt 20 years and above, everybody say 600,000. Say it, let me hear. How many people? 600,000 above the age of 20 that left Egypt. How many of them entered the promised land? How many of them entered the promised land? Two. Only two. In case you think that God is a God of numbers, he is not. The only condition you will enter heaven holy life, righteous life, a life of purity, a life that is dominated by the fear of God. Are you hearing me, everyone? Are you hearing me? Not everybody will go to heaven. Not everybody. No, no, no. All of us, we have a choice to make. See, many people want Jesus to be their savior. But not many people want Jesus to be their Lord. In 47 years of following Jesus, I have seen many people eagerly receive Jesus when an altar call is made. But in three months, you look for them, you, you won't find them. Because of the discipline that the Christian life calls for, you can't talk anyhow as a Christian. You can't dress anyhow as a Christian. You can't eat anyhow as a Christian. You can't drink anyhow as a Christian. You can't behave as you like. Okay. They gave me 40 minutes. You see, this 40 minutes is not enough for me even to introduce what I want to say to you. This is the point at which we are going to pray. You see, prayer Sunday. But if we miss what I am saying, and we go to start praying, God give me car, God give me house, God give me, make me a millionaire, wait, millionaire for what? If you are not going, if you are not sure of going to heaven, what is the meaning of that? Are you following me now? Okay. Why is it that not everyone who says to him, Lord, Lord, will go into heaven? According to Acts chapter Chapter 26 and verse 18. There are five reasons why people are not going to heaven. And those five reasons and the five prayer points we are going to pray this morning. Trusting that God will help you. And trusting that God will help me. Proverbs, sorry, uh, Acts chapter 26 verse 18. Please listen. Mm. Verse 17, for a clearer understanding of verse 18. Let's start from verse 17, then we'll come down to 18. Are you hearing me, Joel, or have you fallen asleep? E. Joel. Oh, the man has gone asleep. Oh. Joel. Joel Mandong. Okay. Jesus was talking to Paul and he said to him I will deliver you from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I am sending you verse 18 Reverend 
Should we carry Cain and go up and visit that Joel? No, 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 no. He should be faster than me. He is in his 30s. He should move faster. Joel, <laughs> the next time, I won't say anything before you see me. Are you hearing me? Okay. All right. Verse 18, let's read together. What is wrong with people who do not know Jesus, who are not following him with the whole of their hearts? What is wrong with them? Listen very carefully. To open their eyes, it means they are blind. <laughs> Let me tell you the truth. Many people come to Equa Church, but they are what? They are blind, though. They are blind. As we are talking now, you have arranged with your friends where you will be two o'clock today at a Burkutu joint or at a beer joint while you are in church you made a phone call before you came here you are saying let them finish quickly so that we get out of here what is all this long preaching so that you will go where at two o'clock you are blind are you listening to me don't take it off yet. And to turn them from it means they are living in somebody is blind. Then he's living in that is darkness or blindness times. But in actual fact, that darkness is a kingdom. It's an organized kingdom. I will come to that point very shortly. What is the next thing that is wrong with anyone who is not following Jesus with the whole heart? The power of Satan is in control of that life. Nobody, none of us sitting here, is free. Either God is controlling your life or else who? Who? In John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus told the Jews, You are of your father. Who? The devil. And they said, No, 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 no. We have God for our father. God is our father. But the person talking to them and the people who were listening, who knew what the truth was? Talk to me now. Who knew the truth? It is Jesus. Who knows? Who is their father? Are you listening to me? They thought they were children of God. We are children of Abraham. They said, they said to him, but in verse 41, they said, we are, God is our father. No. Go to verse 41. Go to verse 41. Now that you have woken up. Ye do the deeds of your father. They said to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father. Even who? God. They said God is their father. The Jews were arguing with Jesus. They said God is their father. Verse 44. Ye are of your father. The who? Did they know it? Did they know it? No, they didn't. So anyone who is not following Jesus with the whole heart, number one, is blind. Number two, He's living in a world where there is no light. He's living in darkness. And that darkness is not empty darkness. It's an organized kingdom. Number three, he's under the control of Satan. Number four, no, 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 no. Uh, girl, I'm coming up. Go to verse 26 of, uh, verse, verse 18 of Acts 26. You know, we just digressed. Okay. To open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive what? It means as at that point that Jesus was talking, what happened to their sins? What happened to their sins? They were unforgiven. The load of sin was still on them. So anyone who is not following Jesus with the whole heart is blind, is living in darkness, it's under the control of Satan and the load of his sin is still upon him. Finally, and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith, which is in me. 
What is the inheritance? Eternal life. These people do not have eternal life. Anyone who is not following Jesus with the whole of his heart, number one is, help me now, number two is living in, number three, he's under the power of, number four, his sins are not forgiven, number five, he doesn't have, if you die like this, where are you going? Where are you going? You may be in the church. You may be coming here every Sunday. But if you die like this, where are you headed? We are going to pray, first of all, about blindness. Brother Jirai, this clock that is here is showing quarter to seven in the morning. Quarter to seven. The real time actually is 9.31. What should we do to Jirai? We don't have 500 naira to buy a pack of uh, Duracell. That is a digression. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four. Joel. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God to shine unto them. Listen. Anyone who is not following the Lord with the whole of his heart is a blind person. And the person who caused that blindness, his name is who? The God of this world. Who is that person? His name is called Satan. This is one of the things he does. But in actual fact, men allow him. Because God has done everything he should do so that your eyes can see. Are you listening to me? The people in this state are the seed that fell along the way. Not on top of rocks. The seed that fell along the way. Do you remember the, the, the parable of the sower? As the sower was sowing seed, some of the seed fell where? Along the way. What happened to those seeds? The birds of the air came and carried them. These are people who receive the word of God. They hear the gospel. But they don't put any store by it. It's not important to them. So immediately as they step out of this door, what will happen? The devil will. You know the war that the devil is fighting against God. is against the word of God. The devil doesn't want you to listen to God. When the devil came to Eve in the garden, what did he say? What did he attack? What did he attack? Did God say that you people should not eat of the fruits here? Did God say anything like that? Did God say anything like that? Only one, only one out of thousands, he told them not to touch. But the devil said, did God, did the Lord tell you not to eat of any fruit in the garden? The devil doesn't want you to listen to God. So basically, the reason, the first reason anybody is going to hell is because of their attitude to the word of God. Because of what, please? Attitude to the word of God. The word of God is nothing in your eyes. You say you are a born-again Christian. You can't read the Bible for 10 minutes in the morning. Five minutes, you will fall asleep. You are living dangerously. What did I say? What did I say? You are living a dangerous life. Your attitude. When I was still a student at the University of Lagos, I heard about Brother Billy 
that anytime Billy is reading Bible in the morning and he knows that he's going to fall asleep, he will put a bucket of water under the table and put his legs inside the water so that he will not fall asleep. But you, you want to read the Bible, you reach under, your, under the pillow and you bring out every day with Jesus. You are lying down. Carry every day with Jesus. Read the verse of the day. And before you say anything in prayer, you are not serious. So. <laughs> you are not serious. Then said Jesus to the Jews which had believed on him, if you continue in my word, John chapter 8 and verse 31, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If you continue in my words, then are ye my disciples indeed. It means there are disciples indeed, then other the rest. Are you following me? Those who continue those to whom the word of God is important, those are the disciples indeed. I'm not the one who said it. Read this in your Bible. John chapter 8, verse 31. So, the first prayer we are going to pray this morning, as we stand up, listen to me. This is a different prayer conference. I'm sorry. But this is the prayer conference that will take you to heaven. Shall we rise to our feet? I want you to talk to God your attitude to the word of God. Should I show you what your attitude is to the word of God? Please stand, 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 everybody. This is a serious matter. Serious matter. All of us who are standing, listen to me. The Bible says, and these are the words of Jesus, you must be born again. If you know where that verse is in the Bible, let me see your hands up. You must be born again. Let me see your hands up. Okay, color. Let me see your hands up. Count for me. Count for me. Count. You must be born again. Let me see your hands up. Up, 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 up. Color, don't waste my time now. Count for me. Count. Count for me. Okay, this man is not serious. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. Hold fire. What are we going to do to Joel? When I want him to project something, he will not project it. This, okay, Joel, Kashiga Ukuyo. Inka Soko, like a Samania now. Are you listening to me? All right, I saw hands up. So I've counted something like between that place and here, 25 hands. If your hand didn't go up, if I tell you to kneel down now, you say that one, one wicked elder told them to kneel down inside church. You must be, but less than 1% of those of us who are here this morning know where it is found in the Bible. I want you personally to talk to God. Okay, Joel, I'm begging you. The next one that, okay, because you knew it, I'll call the one that you don't know now. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. If you know the answer, if you know where it is in the Bible, up, 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 up. One, two, Joel, if you make a, wait, 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 wait. If you make a mistake again, raise the hands, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. He showed it? All of you, what should I do to Joel? 
You tell me. What should I do to him? Esther, I should forgive him. Is this forgivable? But anyway, all I'm trying to do, brethren, talk to God now about your own attitude to the Bible. Do you read the Bible for one hour every day at least? Do you read the Bible up to one hour every day? If you don't, you are telling me that you don't want to go to heaven. Let us close our eyes and talk to God about our personal attitude to studying the word of God. See, we're just talking about reading. That is the most basic level. Okay, before we pray, listen to me, listen. The most basic level of our relationship to the word of God is hearing. So some of us only hear the word of God once in seven days, true or false, when you come to church here. You hear, isn't it? The second level of our relationship with the word of God is reading. Some of us only look at every day with Jesus. That is not reading Bible. You are deceiving yourself. You are not reading Bible at all. You must be reading one chapter after another by order. Something that you have planned to do. Are you listening to me? The second level of our relationship with the Bible is studying. I hope you know the difference between reading and studying. Do you know the difference, Master Life students? You know the difference between reading and studying? When you are studying Bible, that means you are comparing one verse to another verse. Or you are even reading Bible commentaries. Are you listening to me? The next level is memorizing. As you are standing here now, how many verses of the Bible do you know by heart? How many? Only John 3. The next level of our relationship with the Bible is meditating. You don't have time to read the Bible. How will you find time to meditate? Meditating on a verse of scripture, it means you are looking at one verse for one hour. That is why Bile comes here and he says something out of a verse that you have read all your life and it's as if you are reading that verse for the first time. Are you hearing me? So we start by hearing. Then two, by reading. Three, by studying. Four, by memorizing. Five, by meditating. The final part is obeying. Obeying the word. Now, after all these six levels of relating to the Bible, talk to God where you are. Where are you standing? In your attitude to the word of God. Please don't look at me. Close your eyes and talk to God. Is the Bible important to you? If, the Bible, if you are not giving quality attention to the Bible, you are t I'm telling you now, this is the first thing that did disqualify you from entering heaven. The word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. How will you keep sin out of your life except by taking cognizance of the word of God? Then you are not reading. You are not studying. You are not memorizing scripture. You are not meditating on scripture. You are not obeying the scripture. If you don't even know it, how can you obey it? Talk to God where you are standing now. Where are you in this pecking order? Is it that you only hear the word of God once a week? Do you eat only once a week? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4 4. Where are you standing in the pecking order? You hear the word of God only once in a week or you read the Bible only once in a week when you come to church, you will die of starvation of the word. You will die. The devil will kill you. It means the devil will take the word out of your mouth. It will take God, he will take the word of God away from you. Bible, the word of God is the fruit, is the food for your spirit. Just like Eba is the fruit, for, is the food for your body. Talk to God now. My time is up on this point. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Look at your children. You know where each one of them is when it comes to the time we give to the Bible. Most of us have no time for this world. But from today, I pray that you will help us. I pray that you will grace us. I pray that you will discipline us. 
I pray that you will cause us to put this word above any other thing in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. The second reason why people are not going to heaven is because they are living in darkness. We don't have time to read all these verses. But if you are writing anything down, write so that you can go and read at home. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13 is saying that God delivered us out from the power of darkness. So darkness is a power. Darkness is a kingdom. You will also find in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That means our struggle is not against human beings, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked spirits, extremely wicked spirits in the heavenly realms. We are at Christ Christian life is, is a battle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The devil doesn't want you to go to heaven. So that organized kingdom is to take care of you. Now, let me tell you plainly, that organized kingdom, their instrument in your life is the world. What did I say? The world. The world system. How the world dresses is different from how the people of God should dress, true or false. Talk to me, please. How the world drinks is different from how the people of God should drink, true or false. Talk to me now. How the world treats their wives. <laughs> Do you know that there is a religion that permits you to your wife? The girl you talked to a few years ago, you are the only sugar in my tea. If I don't see you, I can fall asleep. Now, you are kicking her. You are slapping her. You are stepping on her. You will meet God one day. Are you hearing me? If you are a member of this church and you are a wife beater, I am warning you, you are sowing a seed. You will come across that seed you will weep, you will cry for what you are doing, but it will be too late. Are you hearing me? I don't have a lot of time to go into this. The way of the world. Anybody loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Anybody who makes himself a friend of the world is an enemy of God. James chapter 4, 4 to 7. Are you listening to me? If you make friends, if the people of the world comfortable with you. You go to a drinking joint and as, you, as soon as you're coming, you're going to say, hey, Oga has come, Oga has come. <laughs> as you're Oga there, you'll be Oga in hell one day. Give the wine to he who is ready to perish. That means you want to perish. You want to go to hell. That's why they're giving you wine and you're taking it. I stop there. Anyone who is living in darkness, has adopted the ways of the world. You are living as the world. If they are distributing money, blood money in the office, you are collecting, you will stand before God one day. You are stealing what is not your own. You are taking what is not your own. You built a big house. You, built, you bought flashy cars. What will it profit you to gain the whole of this world and be in hell? Our way is different. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. One of the reasons why members of Equa will report in hell is because they have chosen the world instead of Jesus. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. A lawyer who was a preacher like me, a preacher of the world, an evangelist, going from village to village. His name is Demas. He was working with Paul. 
How can you be an assistant to Paul and then fall away from the faith? Is your head correct? Demas loved. Demas loved what? Demas loved what? This present world. This present world. Demas was a preacher. Having loved this present world, he abandoned Jesus. As you are sitting here this morning, I just talked about people who are waiting to go out at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Did you hear me that time when I mentioned it? That's a sign that you love the world. Even now, you can go to bed or sleep with anybody you like. You are not married to that person. But you can arrange to go to a hotel and go and sleep there. Don't call yourself a Christian. You are not. But actually, you are an enemy of God. Are you listening to me? As you are sitting here, Whatever the world is doing, your hand is inside. If they are stealing, you did there. If they are beating wife, you are among them. Whatever the world is doing that's against the will of God, you are there. You will not enter. You will not enter. Am I the person who said it? All right, let us stand up. Let us stand up now. Examine your life. Examine your life. Are you a lover of the world? Are you a lover of the world? It's a question you are going to ask yourself and answer it yourself. Today is a day of prayer. We must draw attention to the things that will keep us out of heaven. You love the world? You want to be like the people of the world? You dress like the people of the world? Some people come to our church here. The way they dress and the way harlots dress, half naked, there's no difference. And you say you are a child of God. You are deceiving yourself. You're not a child of God. God we want you to honor yourself. Then honor him. Honor your own body. Respect your own body. Don't invite the world to follow you by the way you dress. Examine your life. What are you doing that is not in consonance with it? But you know it. You know that you are doing what is wrong. Yet you are still doing it. Like the people of the world. You can't do like that and enter heaven now. You can't. You are living in darkness. This darkness is a kingdom. It has rules. It has ways. If you adopt the way of the world, the Bible says that you know, we should offer ourselves a living sacrifice to God. We should not be conformed to the world and its ways. Don't do it. God is not your classmate. God is watching you. God is seeing you. If you judge yourself now, you will not be judged again. Judge yourself now. If there's anything you are doing and you know that it's not in conformity, tell your father, I am sorry. This is how you will ensure that you are going to heaven. Are you listening to me, everyone? Everyone, take one minute, talk to God. Take one minute and talk to God. If you love the world, the love of God is not in your heart at all. And all that Baba wants to hear from you is, I am sorry. I am sorry. Open your mouth and say to your father, I am sorry. I am sorry. I want to, I'm going to drop this nonsense. Maybe a habit, drugs, wine, some other thing that you are getting involved in. Tell your father you are sorry and ask for his forgiveness. That is all that Baba wants to hear from you now. Don't keep quiet. If entering heaven is your purpose, if you want to see Jesus, if you should die in this world, settle the matter with God now. Depart from the world now. Change your ways now. Father, you have heard them. They have spoken to you. Those who have humbled themselves and they have said sorry to you. Let go. In the name of Jesus. Let us be seated. Number three reason why people will not make it to heaven. Lord. The devil the devil. The devil. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. Please, let's see. It. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. Wherein time passed, ye walked according to the course of this world. See, can you see the world now? The enemy we just dealt with. 
according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Please leave this verse. Leave this verse. Don't take it yet. I just told you. There is a spirit who makes people blind. There is a spirit who has cast a spell over the whole world. You hear the word of God, it means nothing to you. Jesus went to the cross and died. We just celebrate Easter. It meant nothing to you. You are still living your life as you like. Making the death of Jesus of no consequence in your life. And it's a choice that you have made. You have been living like that all your life. You've been hearing the word of God. It means nothing to you. What is responsible? There is a spirit inside you. There is a spirit you have allowed. It is called the spirit of the power of the air. His real name is called Satan. The people of Israel thought that God was their father. Did we see it in verse 41 of John chapter 8? They thought that God was their father. But Jesus, who knew better than them, told, who did he tell them their father was? Devil. The spirit, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that works in the children of... If you are not a child of God, if you are not following Jesus, there is a spirit at work inside you. And he's more powerful than your will. You want to stop, but you cannot stop. How many of you agree with what I'm saying when you were in the world? You wanted to stop, but you couldn't stop. Let me see your hands. Up, 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 up. Is that power is, is more powerful than you. It's called the, the power, the prince of the power of the air. He's stronger than you. You cannot face him. There's only one person who can drive him away from your life. What is his name? Only Jesus can drive him away from your life. As you are sitting here now, the things of God mean nothing to you. The word of God means nothing to you. You are walking in darkness. You are copying as the people of the world are living. It's the same way you are living. The reason is that there is a power inside you that is more, is, is stronger than you, greater than you, wiser than you, more knowledgeable than you. It's controlling you. You want to stop, but you cannot stop. This is our third prayer item. Again, shall we stand up on our feet? Everybody, please. Today is a day of prayer. That's why we are standing up 20 times. In fact, if we stand up 100 times, we have not started standing up yet. Because the whole idea, you want to enter heaven. Not be so. You want to enter heaven? It will take discipline. This one of standing up, sitting down, is nothing, actually. Are you listening to me? Those of you who watch, who watch football, eh? Red Devils, uh, Gunners, forever. How many times do people sit down, jump up? In fact, is anybody telling them to sit down and jump up? Talk to me now. In the stadium, is anybody telling them to sit down, jump up? On their own. They are shouting at the top of their voice. Yay! Then they sit down. Then they get up again. Now, if we tell you to sit down, get up in the church, you say, what kind of preacher is this? Sit down, get up, sit down, get up. And you are doing the same thing when your team is playing. This point that we are making now, I told Israel, I, I told him not to, tell. Joel, in Mungama, like as many are now, Ka, Tabata, Kagani, Zamu Hadua now. There is a spirit, there is a power, there is a force controlling your life. You may not even be aware of it, but the, the sign is what you are doing. You don't like it. You want to stop, but you cannot stop. You need help. Call on the person who can help you now. This is what this prayer is all about. Are you following me? Let us pray. Everybody, please close your eyes. Close your eyes. Examine your life. There is a power something stronger than you, something beyond your ability. And you are saying, what you want to say, say, Jesus, deliver me. I want to stop this habit. Jesus, please deliver me. This power is too strong for me. Deliver me out of his hands. I don't want to follow him into hell. Jesus, please deliver me. My Savior, deliver me. Help me. Save me. Kick him out of my life. 
please do not keep quiet. The whole idea is you want to be among the few that will go to heaven. Register your name now. You are in Equa Church. This is one of the few churches that will preach about heaven, talk to you about how to avoid going to hell. And I'm telling you now, 45 years I have been here, I have heard it. That is how I know that my going to heaven is assured because I'm hearing the truth from the Bible. So tell Jesus, deliver me. Lord, save me. This thing that is too powerful for me to stop, Jesus, deliver me. Kick him out of my life. Disgrace him out of my life. Give me your victory every day. Father, you have heard them. Those who have humbled themselves to pray and to seek you, deliver them. Save them. Let them receive the joy in their hearts that something has been kicked out of their lives, even now. In the name of Jesus. Please let us be seated as we draw to the close of this discussion. Now, number four. What is the fourth problem that the people who are not going to heaven, who are not following Jesus with a whole heart, what is the fourth problem that they have? Their sins are not forgiven. Again, the only reason why sin is not forgiven is that repentance is absent. Let us read Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. This is the next prayer that we're going to pray. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. What is the first word? What is the first word? What is the meaning of repent? About turn. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Turn away, turn away, turn away from what you are doing. Turn away. Tell yourself, I will never do this thing again. Even if I would die for it, let me die. I will never do it again. Turn away. Repent. Turn away from it. Judge yourself. Condemn yourself. And then tell God about it. This thing, I will never do it again. You who are stronger than my will, take over the control of my will. I'm handing over my will to you. Help me never to fornicate again. Help me not to tell lies as my way and manner of life again. Help me not to be jumping from bed to bed again. The choice is yours. This is the fourth prayer we are going to pray. Today is the day of prayer. Shall we stand again as you used to jump anytime your, your team is performing? Talk to God now. Repent. 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 Turn away. Then you'll be converted. Tell God, I will never do it again. Open your mouth and say, Lord, having heard your word, this thing I'm doing, I will never, my mind is made up, I will never do it again, even if I will die in the process. Let me die. But I will never do it again. Never. Never. And what is in your record against me, please forgive me. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse me. Let the blood that flowed on the cross of Calvary wipe my records clean. Make them without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. Open your mouth. This thing is coming to an end. In five minutes, I'm, I'm done. Talk to God. Please don't keep quiet. The power to be consistent is not in you. Ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit so you will not go back to those things. You will not go back to those things. The things you are saying you are sorry for, you will not go back to them. Finally, finally, the last prayer we are going to pray is in John chapter 10, verse 27 to 28. The point here is that these people who are not following Jesus with the whole heart, have no inheritance of eternal life. They don't have eternal life. Okay. 27. First, let's see. 27. Everybody, please, let's read. 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they do what? If you are a child of God, you will do what? You will follow Jesus. Because you are hearing his voice. His voice is coming to you from the word as we are speaking now. 
All right, if you are hearing the word of Jesus, you are hearing the voice of Jesus, what should you do? You follow him. If you follow him, what will he do for you? Let us read. Read. And I gave unto them eternal life, and they shall never, neither shall any man, only Jesus can keep you. Only he. If your life is not in his hands, you are in trouble as you're standing there. Open your mouth now and say, Father, now that I have repented, give me a witness that I have eternal life. That witness is joy that you cannot explain. It is lightness that you cannot explain. Give me eternal life. Fill my heart with joy. Let me know that something happened to me today. Let me know that a difference has occurred in my life today. It's always joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Talk to God, please. Talk to God, please. Give me a token. Give me a token. Let me know that something happened in my life today. Show me a sign that this thing has happened and that I'm free from the hands of the devil and from the power of the kingdom of darkness and that my blindness has been removed. Okay. Father, you have heard them. You have heard them. They have spoken to you. Cause, oh God, that today will be a watershed in the lives of your people. That we will remember today this seventh day of May 2023 will be the day that everyone here can put down in our diary. We settle the issue of our lives with God today. My blindness is killed. My friendship with the world is obviated, is cancelled. The power of the devil, I have been delivered from that power. I am free. My sin is taken away. Now I have power to say no to the devil. And I have been given eternal life. Let today be that day. In the name of Jesus. Reverend is coming to pray. Why all heads are bowed? and all eyes are closed. You, as a person, you want the reverend to pray that the power of God will undergird you. That the grace of God and the help, divine help from heaven will support you all the days of your life. Let me see your hands up. Up, up, up. Raise, Raise those hands. Raise them, raise them. Reverend, please come. Raise those hands. Man of God pronounces a blessing if we remain. The power of God, Lord, help me all the days of my life to live in victory over sin. Up, 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 up. Raise those hands. Let me pray. Hands up as we pray together. At this moment, we are asking for the power of God upon everyone that is raising up his hands so that we'll be able to say no to sin and to live a righteous life. God in heaven, Hands of your servants and children are up unto you. Your word says, hold my hand and I know I will not fall down. God in heaven, you know each and every one of us with our challenges. And also why our hands are up. God in heaven, I pray that you bless us according to your riches in glory. 
Our hands are up, O oh Lord, to say to you, we can overcome this world and the activities of the world and the spirit that is in the world. Only those who possesses the spirit of God Almighty. And so, Lord, I'm asking of you right now, O oh God, let that spirit of power enter every one of us so that we'll be able to live righteous life, live above sin in the name of Jesus. The Lord will be able to live above all trials and temptations on this side of the world. Thank you because your promises are yea and amen. Once you promise, once you say it, it is done. Receive that power to live for Jesus in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing. Thank you for answering. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.